hello viewers uh, let's move on to understanding a better understanding of uh, urban open spaces and uh, uh, urban landscape in general now as we know that uh, cities comprises of built and unbuilt environment and uh, in the presentation the powerpoint presentation we have a, a small map of amdabad the old city of amdabad and in this powerpoint you could see in the cursor these are the selected pockets that i am going to talk about or rather talk about the tissue that exists in that area if you look at the tissue that exists from you know this area these are the open spaces that are linked with each other through the network of streets and it just talks about how each open space is different from the other when we look up blow up to analyze this further we also see pockets of courtyards so an urban tissue essentially could be measured in a 400 meter by 400 meter uh, block or if one wants to uh, look at it and detail it out in a 500 meter radius depending on the scale of the city and the structure of the city in general mumbai known to be a congested city and here i just wanted to talk about how it's a natural hub and when the portuguese moved from surat to mumbai they moved because not just because of the locational advantage of how the mumbai as a hub uh, acted as a natural hub but also because you had a vibrant you know uh, interaction with the western world or western sea the arabian sea moving on to the gulf of the country which is through this route that uh, the parsis uh, that own almost one third of mumbai or land mass of one third of mumbai and south mumbai south bombay uh, exist here you have several open spaces and interaction with the sea to the city structure the nariman point which is this this area and uh, bandra worldly ceiling that we call it which is a built monument or a engineering marvel built onto the sea well although mumbai is largely congested filled with people has a density of over 25000 people 20 to 25000 people per square kilometer in certain places you have a large national park called the sanjay gandhi national park right in the at the periphery of the city and then it's also that the city is ecologically sensitive site and has plenty of rivers and lakes which feeds the city's masses in general this is a short video of the maximum city the city that is so densely packed that there is no privacy to be afforded here it is as you see that there is a lot of people moving around this is not bombay though but i was just to showcase that there is so many people that i'm showing the city of bombay and uh, this is an evaluation of the largest city in 180 where india didn't even feature into it and as the years passed by in 1950 when we we just had got our independence the population rose and now in 2010 mumbai is among the biggest cities and by 2050 mumbai will hold the largest population in any city so that's why the focus is bombay mumbai this is the people going trying to get to the other station and uh, the transport network which is tooks or autos uh, ferry people to the station the large billboards advertising billboards and these are the conditions of the how people live the slums just outside the bandra station made of containers and steel and within the slums also you have such industries which are doing really fine like you know the tailors building and the this is a video of dharavi and uh, and how slums have generated there is this the clear divide between the rich and the poor the city only uh, builds for the rich and the poor live in these conditions of slum along the pipeline which feeds the water this is the condition if anyone has seen the movie slum dog billionaire you would find plenty of bombay shown in it and the trade and occupation of the of the people and the spirit of the people is often 
spoken about very widely and very on a very well known this is a scrap dealer in the heart of dharavi uh trying to uh make a living the only open space that exists are the terraces in the slums most people uh, the men folk generally sleep on the terraces and the women inside the warmth of their houses the city skyline otherwise change the cities progress very quickly same is the condition in most african developing nations so during the industrial revolution the state of european cities were as bad as what you see in today's mumbai reason being that industrial revolution brought about machines and opportunities for people to come and spread their uh, i mean opportunities to earn living in the in these large cities like paris london the state of paris and london was equally or probably worse than what today's mumbai's condition is and uh, i will just go through uh, as to how uh, baron hausman uh, changed the way paris looks in today's paris by outrightly demolishing large number of buildings creating large passageways and large roads leading all the way to the tram the arc and the landmarks and monuments of paris here you have uh, the restructuring note of paris wherein uh, the black lines indicate the access ways or the new access ways which would reach the arterial roads of the paris city and to do this to build this access way there were several buildings that were brought down because paris as a city was to showcase the future of how france would develop this is again like how how i explained about showing urban tissue and analyzing urban tissue in the previous slides we're going to get into the details of seeing how urbanity changed altogether in these portions of the shon river and uh, paris has changed quite a bit in the in in due course of time there was a highway or rather a passage thoroughway uh, moving all along this shon river which has changed entirely uh, and has been made to be pedestrianized which was earlier motorized this is the example of how paris paris's uh, island ild uh, palais palais looks like in the restructuring of the roads uh, hosman had passed across these three roads which are indicated in red as the across the notre dame and you know hotel dieu they created these passageways to get a better access to these landmarks this is an image which we are very familiar with on paris this is the tram tram the arc which was rather the inspiration for the present day india gate that we have and this is uh, palais elise which is the uh, road or the boulevard which becomes very vibrant during christmas there's trees on both sides there's nice uh, uh, roads on uh, road in between for motorable road in between and uh, there are cafes and sit outs and places where people enjoy the public realm all together and these are the roads that Baron Hausman carved to get to the tram the arc. Okay, now when we look at it, the tram the arc is it starts from uh, the palace of Louis the Sixteen, which also hosts the uh, Louvre, to the tram the arc, and these are the uh, bridges across the Shon River. which sort of helps now to balance the east from the west and this is the aerial picture of paris in general and there you have the eiffel tower the great eiffel tower which was built during the world expo and during the industrial revolution so i just want a short video of how paris has transformed so here's a video of people playing and enjoying open space and how things changed Now Paris before it became the economic center this is Paris like you see so the street is a river of life of the city and the place where we come together 
the pathway to the center. These are the informal markets that are thriving in a city like Paris, which is very formalized otherwise. You see all sorts of articles being sold, the informal and the formal exist together. These are these nice big plazas and Triumph the Arc along the boulevard where you have the vehicle movement. Okay, so we'll talk about another city, Brazil, Brasilia. This city was created in the 1960s again uh, by Lucia Costa and Oscar de Nemia. Oscar Nemia. Uh, the concept of the city was that they viewed the city as an aeroplane or a bird in flight of a bird. And that's where you see the wings appearing on the site. Wings of the bird as the, the highways. This is the axis which reaches the Congress, the plateau, which is uh, the monumental axis. And this is the axis that is for the people's axis. And uh, as you see the image, this is the monumental axis that you can clearly see that there are a lot of green spaces in between. This is the Congress and the democracy votes in the leader, the president who works from this. There's the super six blocks and a repetition of these super six blocks across all these spaces on the residential highway. They were called super six blocks, blocks because the, the building was not more than six stories high and all of them had built on stilts so that they could accommodate the vehicles. So the scale, this, this city has a population of about two million and the scale of the city is humongous, it's monumental. You can't get from one place to the other by a car, uh, by a by walk. And which is why we, when we spoke about in our earlier slides on uh, how it is important for the cities, uh, for the people to walk in the cities and the city should be reduced to that size. In fact, the Greek planner, the famous Greek planner Hippodamus used to restrict the cities to a size of 30,000 people or where 30,000 people could reside and live together. And when he had, when the city had to expand, he built another city very close by from this particular city. And this was done because back then, the uh, amount of resources available were only limited and it would have been adequate only for 30,000 people. So I have a short uh, video again to talk about which just showcases Brasilia as the capital city of Brazil. So if there's a lesson in street watching, it is, it is that people do basics. And as environments go, a street that is open to the sky and filled with people and life is a splendid place to be. I guess that's what the makers of Brasilia, Oscar Nemia, as you hear him talk, he is no more now, speaks about how architecture is an invention for him in how he went about seeing these spaces. It, it is a beautiful space that, a beautiful plinth that gives the building, uh, creates the highlight for the building. But in general, because of the unavailability of sitting space, you won't find, you know, all, all these spaces are congested with these motor vehicle and hardly anybody could walk. They were students of Le Corbusier, so, when Lucia Costa got the job to design the city, he invited Oscar Nemia, who built several buildings in this particular place, Brasilia, and uh, beautified the buildings and beautified the city in general. So, although uh, Brasilia as a city has been criticized over the years by many urban planners and, and uh, activists, it continues to remain a city which symbolizes Brazil as a progressive nation. Although Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro are the capitals, uh, the financial capitals. This is Jan Gale, a uh, very famous urbanist who works on, who's worked and transformed Melbourne and cities across. Now you see, you won't find people all on, on one man walking all along. It's just, just impossible to walk the city and especially designed for cars. Cars and bikes were considered to be a member of the family and houses were the machines for living. So when I get back to understanding of urban open space, now why it should be celebrated? Why these urban open spaces need to be 
the focus and uh, how it should be looked at. So, I am going to essentially talk about or categorize the urban open spaces into four uh, essential topics, mainly the streets. Most cities have large amount of streets which varies from any there, anywhere between 6 to 20, 25 percent of their whole urban mass or urban area. Parks, public squares and plazas, these are these are the second thing that I will talk about in the course of urban open space and how people react to these open spaces. Waterfronts and its edges, urban forestry and agriculture. Uh, waterfronts and its edges specifically because now that in Indian cities we've started polluting our waters, waterways, it just becomes, uh, it's, it's, not, it's no more a pleasure going on to the water edges. But then there are examples in the city, uh, in, the, uh, in my presentation, in which I will be talking about how uh, water edges and urban spaces, how water edges are important to our urban spaces. Okay, so this is another video, which is a video of a, of a competition entry, which in 2013, uh, Urban Land Institute had created a competition. And this, is an, this competition will showcase uh, the five uh, urban open spaces or uh, urban landscape design, which won the competition. So, in a congested city, uh, how and where these, you know, where you could play, where you could play and relax, these are the kind of urban open spaces that all of us aspire for in India, but uh, we seldom have any to celebrate them. You know, places where people could do yoga, right along the sea, right next to the sea. Or walk around in nice shade, tree shades, and we'll sit around in tree shades and enjoy the water and overlook a water body. These are examples of ghats that I'll show you in the future, in the volleyball courts and spaces where you could children could play, and uh, so this is Brooklyn Bridge Park, uh, and how it transformed and created this small park across uh, on the water edge where people could look at the water edge and enjoy the water area. This is a phenomenal idea where people, where people get to, you know, engage with the water. This is Cumberland Park in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. Again, an example, a beautiful example of how urban open spaces and, you know, uh, uh, brings out the child in you, you know, from uh, dredging and uh, enjoying and planting trees. You know, when you're planting a tree, you're planting a hope. And how children play in sand, because this is the parks and waterfronts in Southeast Falls Creek. This is in Vancouver, British Columbia. Like earlier, I said, Vancouver is one of the most livable cities in the country, in the world today. It's only because of these nice, large open spaces. Uh, which has brought people, although their climates are not suitable, they often have uh, you know, six months of the year, they have cold climate or snow, it's covered laden with snow. People celebrate these open spaces. This is Wilmington Waterfront Park again in California. Again, children, people enjoying. Else, most of the time you'll find that our public open spaces are filled with car parks. This is just fabulous. It's sometimes we wonder whether we could get this in India. And this is the last the yards park in Washington DC, where uh, the water edge is made to ac being accessed by the people to enjoy the, the surrounding and you have this space being used for people to exercise and enjoy that space all together. So, so before I go any further, I'll just quickly uh, talk about urban tree cover and urban open space. Now, in uh, some cities, some green cities, we have uh, about 20 to 30 percent of uh, the total geographic area, which is under the green space. And as per the WHO standards, it sort of recommends about 9 meters square of green open space per capita is required in a city. But you will be surprised to see that uh, in most Indian cities, you don't have that. A city like Ahmedabad, Surat, all of them have a lesser green cover 
of less than 10 percent, 9 percent. You know, you see city like Atlanta, which has a huge 53.9 percent green cover, is a area which is spread across 4,000 square kilometers and uh, having a resident population of only 50 lakhs or 5 million people. And whereas a uh, city like Delhi, 20% of the city's area is under road, under road as such. So a large amount of cities like a new city like Chandigarh and uh, Gandhinagar have higher ratio or higher percentages of green cover than the city in general. And as per the Indian State Forest uh, Report, ISFR 2013, Urban tree cover is about 16.4% of urban areas. This is on an average, but it's not a consolidated report. Yeah, But deforestation is happening not just in Indian cities. It's also happening all over the world. In fact, in America, about 4 million trees, sit, uh, 4 million trees get cut in urban areas every year. And uh, which is... Uh, even in Indian context, you know, you have several uh, large, I don't have the number, but for every urban infrastructure project uh, that gets executed, for instance, in the Chennai metro case, 17,000 trees were cut during the building or for making, uh, creating space for building the Chennai metro. It has an adverse impact on the city's environment and we'll talk about this when we are talking about urban forestry and urban agriculture. Thank you.